Mike Wheeler is one of the most queer-coded characters I've ever seen. Let's look at 10 moments I hinted at that this character is gay. You just go straight down. Like straight, straight. Right on the money, as I said. It just doesn't make sense. Like most queer coding in season four, a lot of it is very humorous and easy to miss because it's also a double meaning. Obviously here, they're talking about the coordinates that Susie wrote to find L. However, this has a double meaning and I'll prove that to you because this is also a reference to E.T. of all things. This is based off finger placement. So Mike's finger starts at the wildlife refuge and slowly slides across where it's pointing at Hancock Summit. So Hancock Summit is exactly 11 miles from E.T. Highway, extraterrestrial highway. If you look right on a map, Ironically, in a town called Crystal Springs, which sounds like Crystal Lake, and we know the Duffers love horror films. And even if you zoom in here, you'll see that there's a reference to E.T. with E.T. jerky. There's a lot of very humorous things on Extraterrestrial Highway. If you ever go through Nevada, I highly recommend it because it's very camp. And this scene is also a reference to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I actually did a video parallel of it. So as you can see, this tiny little clip that seemingly means nothing and could easily be edited out had two different movie references and all these small little details. So I don't think this little hint over here means nothing. Yes, I'd just say Stonewall, and if you know anything about queer history, Stonewall was one of the most major events that led to several things like Pride itself. So once again, this tiny little scene had a bunch of references and queer coding, and you probably just skipped over it thinking, why was this even here? You know, just pointing out that it doesn't make sense that Mike could be straight. And we're barely getting started. Holy macaroni! Where are you going? I have an idea. Boys only. Seriously? Just trust me on this one. Okay, so we wait until the pool closes. We are once again here with a line with double meaning. Again, the writers love to do this as hints about their characters and story elements. Obviously, Mike is saying boys only and excluding Max and Elle is because they're girls and they're not allowed in the boys' locker room. However, as a double meaning, this isn't the first time they use something like this to queer code a character. Let's look at Will. I have seen into the future, and I've seen that today is a new day. A day free of girls. In the very same season, we have similar queer coding with Will, who is an established, canonically gay character, using the line, a day free of girls, showing once again this double meaning. With Mike, he uses the phrase, I have an idea, boys only. So he just has this idea about himself at this point that maybe he's only into boys, and that's the double meaning here. This section here is queer coding for both Mike and Will as it slowly zooms in on the word men for them at the end of the scene, just to emphasize the point. Michael. Yeah? I'm not mad at you. No? No, of course not. <sighs> All this that's been going on with Will, I can't imagine what it's been like for you. It just, I want you to feel like you can talk to me. I never want you to feel like you have to hide anything from me. I'm here for you. Okay. This is one of those early moments in season one that queer codes Mike. This scene was already queer coded before it got recontextualized in season four with this scene. I don't want you to forget that I'm here. And I'll always be here. No matter what. Because you're my brother. And I love you. And there is nothing in this world Okay? Absolutely nothing that will ever change that. You got that? At this point in the story, Jonathan has figured out that Will is gay and is subtly letting him know that when he's ready to tell him, he's going to be okay with it and he still loves him. If you'll notice, the dialogue is almost exactly the same as the scene with Karen and Mike. This that's been Again, going on with Will. Right, a lot more complicated than Legos like ever you. knows, you know? I just... It just... I, I want, want you to you feel like you can talk here. to me. I never want you to feel I'll like you have to hide here. anything from me. No matter what. I'm here for you. Because okay. you're my brother. But even before season four, adding on to this and making almost an exact same scene, in this scene, Mike is hiding Elle in his closet, which, hello, more queer coding. But it's also Karen letting her son know that if he has something he feels like he needs to hide, say his relationship with Will, who it seems like she might suspect there's a crush thing going on there. 
she's willing to listen to him. If Mike ever wants to come out as gay, queer, whatever, she's there to listen to him, just like Jonathan is there for Will. Hey, zombie boy. Do you want to dance? So the snowball scene, the snowball scene has so much going on with it, you guys. It's it's going to get its own separate video because there's a lot. So first and foremost, Mike pushes Will to dance with this girl, instantly regrets it, and we get sad-looking, dejected Mike. It's also a parallel to Dustin, and I'm going to show you the parallel side to side. Dustin is sad that his crush Max is dancing with Lucas. Dustin goes and sit in a corner alone, dejected. Nancy, Mike's sister, comes over and offers to dance with him, even teaching him how to dance. So with that context, we see Dustin is jealous of Lucas because he's dancing with his crush and then dances with Nancy. So why is it any different when Mike is doing the exact same thing with Will and then dances with Elle? This is cheesy school dance where you go in the gym and dance to music and stuff. I've never been, but I know you're not supposed to go with your sister. I mean... You can, but it'd be really weird. Will you be like my brother? Yeah, they're compared to family a lot. It's really weird, you guys. Unless, you know, that's intentional setup that they're supposed to be platonic this entire time and Mike is gay. I hope my spelling was better this time. Miss you. Love. Al. What the hell are you doing? It's 10 after. Oh, shit, shit. You have 30 seconds or I'm leaving without uh, you. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, I have to find my pants. Mike's introduction scene in season four is probably one of his most queer-coded moments. So we start with the rainbow-covered paper, panning to Mike, who's in front of an open closet with the light on, with a one-way arrow pointing to the closet with a room full of muscular men. Yeah, he might be gay. Just to point out that the posters do in fact mean something, here's Steve's room in season one. Bikini girls galore. He's interested in women. We also have it with Lucas in season four. And in fact, it's all over this jock space that they made out of Benny's burgers. So why is it any different for Mike? Because it isn't. It's a sign Mike is gay. The one-way sign pointing to the closet. Could they get more on the nose than he's literally in the closet? One way could also be one way, aka he swings one way, which is boys. She skateboards, so she's pretty awesome. Awesome? You haven't even spoken a word to her. Hey, I don't have to. I mean, look at her. Susie does. She's a genius. Is she cute? I think Phoebe Cates only hotter. That's just bullshit media propaganda. There's this whole reoccurring theme with Mike of disgust towards girls. It's been happening since season one. Every time he's equated to like Elle, he pulls a face. Every time they bring up another girl like Max, he pulls a face. When they talk about Phoebe Cates, he pulls a face. And when he's surrounded by girls in the lab, he also pulls a face. And he does it several other times outside of this. This is a sign that he's not interested in girls. Do you remember the first day that we met? It was, it was the first day of kindergarten. I just walked up to you and I asked. I asked if you wanted to be my friend. And you said yes. You said yes. It was the best thing I've ever done. If you haven't rewatched Stranger Things in a while, you probably forgot that Mike's first monologue was in season two to Will, and he wasn't pushed by anyone to make that monologue. It came from his heart to the point where it moved him to tears. Talking about the best decision of his life was becoming friends with Will. So when we see this monologue in season four where he's talking about how his life started the day that they found her in the woods, you know that's complete bullshit. And I think Elle knows that too. What makes the season two monologue so gay is the fact that it's compared directly to a love confession in season four. If this wasn't a parallel, it would be a little bit harder to explain as purely gay. It could just be, oh, he just really cares about his best friend, which he does. He does really care about his best friend. However, this is a boy who is very young, who obviously has a crush on his best friend, who doesn't really understand those feelings yet, 
confessing partially his feelings to Will in season two. Again, we're seeing something from the earlier seasons be recontextualized because of something that happened in season four. If the monologue didn't happen to Elle in season four as a love confession, it would be slightly harder to equate the season two monologue as a love confession as well. But again, because it happened in season four, it recontextualizes. And also, Mike is actually being honest here, unlike he is in season four. Nancy, hey, um, do you want to join Hellfire tonight? <coughs> Can you fight with dice? Yes. Welcome to another extremely queer-coded moment from season four, episode one. There was a lot of them for Mike. I like to fondly refer to this as Mike's gay montage, aka finding a sub for D&D. So this is again one of those scenes I'm probably gonna have to make a separate video on because there's a lot of little details in it. So I'm just gonna point out the big stuff, so let's start. Before it kicks off into the musical montage, it starts with Mike staring at two boys in the journalism room who just happen to have these things in front of them. You seriously cannot make this up. With the music starting, we go to two boys wrestling in Mike's point of view in the camera work. Behind him is a bunch of boys working out. Hi, have we seen muscular men before? His bedroom. So things like working out and stuff tends to pop up in queer movies a lot. Here's an example from the Celluloid Closet documentary, which talks about queer coding in films. Well, there were films even in the 50s that got away with an amazing amount of, of at least gay subtext. A pin. In the film of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, there's a gym full of bodybuilders who have absolutely no interest in Jane Russell. Doesn't anyone want to play? So this documentary and this scene in particular really stand out. One, because we have Mike with his whole wrestling queer coding behind him. And two, she says, do you want to play? And that is the exact lines being sang in the background of Mike's scenes to the song Play With Me. So yeah, another double meaning. He's looking for a D&D sub, but this is also the gayest montage I have ever seen, and let's continue it. Just bullshit media propaganda. 60 minutes begs to differ. The current date in the show is March 21st, 1986. The last aired episode of 60 Minutes was covering the AIDS epidemic in San Francisco and how tight-knit the community was. You can see a clip of it here. We want to live. That is all we want, America. Are we so different from you? And now our numbers have been diminished. And many here among us tonight have been already condemned to an early and painful death. But we are pledged to the memory of those who have fallen and those who will follow to see this struggle through to the end. We send this message to America. We are the lesbians and gay men of San Francisco. And though we are again surrounded by uncertainty and death, we are survivors. We shall survive again, and we shall be the strongest and most gentle people on this earth. Thank you very much. Again, the Duffer Brothers are known for putting in tiny details like this. I've already proved it earlier. To have the last episode aired of 60 Minutes, which they directly reference in the show for Mike, and it be about the gay community of San Francisco and the AIDS epidemic, that's queer coding. It's a hint that he's gay. Yeah, I'd buy that, except that Vicky is definitely not the wrong girl. We just don't know that, do we? She returned fast times, paused at 53 minutes, 5 seconds. Do you know who pauses fast times at 53 minutes, 5 seconds? People who like boobies, Ew, Robin. Gross. Boobies! Don't say boobies! Not a big deal, okay? I like boobies. You like boobies. Vicky likes boobies! Definitely! It's boobies! I think Phoebe Cates only hotter. So funnily enough, Fast Times has quickly become the sexuality gauge of Hawkins. Apparently you can tell everybody's sexuality based off Fast Times. Steve likes Fast Times. He likes women. Robin likes Fast Times. She likes women. Vicky likes Fast Times. She likes women. Dustin likes Fast Times. He likes women. Mike, on the other hand, well, he made this face. I think Phoebe Cates only hotter. 
So out of the five people who have had a reference to Phoebe Kate slash Fast Times, Mike Wheeler is the only one who makes a disgusted face. Welcome to the Fast Times Hawkins sexuality (laughs) cage. It's ridiculous, but that's how this show works. Boobies! I love you too. The biggest proof that Mike Wheeler is gay is the scene that Elle finally tells him that she loves him and then kisses him. If you'll notice, Mike had his eyes open the entire time he's standing in front of a closet in Will's room and then has a realization face afterwards. I've seen people fight for their lives trying to say that Mike was just surprised here, that he was happy or something, like he had a slight smile at the end, some ridiculous stuff like that, and I'm just like, no. This is irrefutable evidence that Mike Wheeler is gay because the Duffers love Dawson's Creek. And Mike parallels the character of Jack so much in this final scenes with him in season three. Let me show you them. I'm not gay, Joey. Okay? Yeah. Let's try to maybe stop that change. Turn back the clock to make things go back to how they were. Today. Today was a day the world got smaller. We were more afraid. Not of what I am, but what I what I could be. I loosen my collar to take a breath. My eyes fade. And I see, I see him. The image of perfection. I keep thinking, what am I so scared of? And I wish I could escape the pain, but these thoughts, they invade my head. Are you gay? I, I care for you so much. Joey, I care about you so much. You've been such a good friend to me, which is why I can't stand the thought of losing you. You're scared of losing her. I am scared that one day you'll realize that you don't need me anymore. And I thought that if I said how I felt, it would somehow make that day hurt more. Thank you for being honest with me. This morning, I told my father that I, I was gay. I just, I don't know. I guess I just, I wanted to, to say that. Surf shut, Romeo. And what's interesting about that is that that's, that of course is what it was like to express homosexuality in life, that we could only express ourselves indirectly, just as people on the screen could only express themselves indirectly. So I hope today this video showed you the top 10 reasons why I think Mike Wheeler is gay and showing proof from the show itself. Also going into the amount of insane detail that this show has, and it's not just for Mike, it's for every single character and almost every single plotline. If you put in the effort to look for it, you will find it, and it's so, so fascinating. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one, and if you want to watch more about Gay Mike, I have an entire video that I'll link below in the description. Bye, nerds!